day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, I'm glad you're back. I hope you enjoyed some of my Bible studies uh, that we've been doing. And I'm telling you, what I'm trying to do is encourage everybody to really do have Bible studies. And and listen, <laughs> if you're a Christian, you need to know the Word of God for yourself. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God, not to man, but to God. So you want to study. And, and I like sharing. And you also want to share what you learn. And that's what I like doing. That's why I do these videos. I, I, I do it because I like to share the revelation that I get from studying and discussing the Word of God with other people. Uh, so, but one of the things, too, that we're trying to show that I don't think, I, I think it's time to stop playing church. It's just be the church. And you know what What does it mean? What does it look like to be the church? So one of the things that I always, I think, like to at least want to start emphasizing is, what is it when people talk about who Who's, who's the church? You know, what, what, what does it mean when we say the church? You know, or what does it mean that what a church is supposed to look like? And that's when it gets into these scriptures here. And I like this in Galatians. In Galatians 5, chapter 5, 22 and 23, but the fruits of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there's no law. There's no law, you don't get a ticket. Through, but this is what, when people talk about being a Christian, this is what they're talking about, having these characteristics operating in your life. And I can tell you, most people want to be around people that have these characteristics. Most people don't want to be around somebody that don't have any love in their heart. People don't want to be around people who don't have peace or joy. People don't want to be around people who don't have patience. That's what that long suffering stands for. Just being patient to one another. We really do want that. We don't want to be around rough people. We want to be around people's gender. We want to be around people who want to uh, constantly throw things on the table, the floor, spit at your chew. You know what I mean? We just don't want to be around those type of people. We want to be around rude people. We don't want to be around uh, people that operate and do bad things. We want to operate people that want to try to do good things. Good to what? Good to everybody around them. If it's going to be harmful to somebody, then we don't really want to hang around those type of people. I know. But if you do, you go ahead. But I know. The other thing about faith is really talking about faithfulness. Not talking about your, your belief system or your religion. It's talking about being faithful. If you're going to pick a girl up on time, pick her up on time. You say you're going to be there at 7, be there at 7. If the young man say you're going to pick you up at 7, be ready at 7. It's being faithful. Being faithful to your job. Being faithful in your studies for even education and trying to get a degree. Uh, meekness. Meekness means being humble or being submissive, submissive to God. Humble is the fact is that I am the righteous of God, not because of what I did, because of what he did. And so therefore, I want to be meek about that, not being pride and boastful about it, right? You know, some people say, I don't smoke, don't chew, don't hang like around people to do. Well, you know, the thing about it is, um, I don't do that if I don't do that because the grace of God has showed me to bear these fruits. Not only are there people that's going to bring me down, but lift me up. That's what all we want, right? So people that will lift us up. And then that, that temperance means self-control. You know you don't want to be around somebody that don't have any control. You especially talk about they drink something and they all act like a fool. <laughs> you, 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 don't, you don't want that. That's what I'm saying. And so, so being a Christian is not... What Bible you carry so people can see you carrying a Bible, what you what you put on your car, bumper sticker, or, or, or they seeing you going to church, you make sure they see you going to church. No, man, that's not that's not what fruits God wants you to bear. He wants you to bear those fruits that I'm showing you. Just, just learn to love. If you don't know how to love yourself, because that's one of the big problems. You don't even know what love is. Just understand this. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but ever ever life. He sacrificed the life of his son for your salvation. What we want to do is not be selfish 
toward anything or, or anybody, but learn to be patient toward one another. Okay? So that's why I want to make sure we bring that uh, in these introductions. If I don't have time for anything else, I at least want to do that. You know what I mean? <laughs> what, what, what's the, what's, 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 what, what are the fruits? What does a Christian look like? It's called Bedlam's Fruits. You can learn to read and study the Word of God and understand the Word of God. That's why we do these things. But this is what you're supposed to be. Be daily. We don't want you to just be in church bearing these fruits. We don't want you to be, and look, we don't want you to job not bearing these type of fruit. We want this in your job, right? We want this in your home. We want you to, when you walk the streets, we want people to bear the fruits of the Spirit. So I'm going to keep on emphasizing that. What we talked about in the study, and I'll bring those up right quick. Uh, we talked about the keys of David. We talked about the authority. That when they mention the Bible about the keys of David, talking about the authority and the control that's given when you have those keys. And we use scriptures that refer to it in Isaiah 22, uh, verse uh, 17. We, I think it's 17 and 25. We started talking about the fact is that behold, the Lord will carry thee away with a mighty captivity and will surely cover thee. We want God to cover us, amen? And then we want the fact is that the, in, in 22 itself, it says, in the keys of the house of David, I will lay upon his shoulders so that he shall open and none shall shut. He shall shut and none shall open. That's kind of a foreshadow of Jesus Christ. And then we also you refer to the script Isaiah 9, 6 in this section D. This is what it is, section D. It's for unto us a child is born. Unto us his son is given, the governor shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. All these are foreshadowing of Jesus. Some would say, in the increase of, of his government, his government in peace, there shall be no end. Back to the fruits again, right? We want peace. We don't want, that's what we want. And that's what we talk about in the gospel with Jesus trying to pray. And then it say, upon the throne of David, upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth ever and ever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. That's part of the gospel what it, in, in the Old Testament is foreshadowing what Jesus brings to us. And see, it starts first with us having the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So that's what we're going to focus on in part D. I mean, part E, I hope you enjoy it, I, and, I, and I know you will, and I, and I do encourage you always to try to study. Study the Word of God. Learn that Word of God, because that's where your blessing comes from. So, like I said, I like to share these videos. So, it goes out on YouTube, goes out on Facebook. Those, I, I, I pray that it gets to the person who may want to listen to these to studies. And you know what? I pray that my friends and those who... Who, who, who wants to understand this word of God, use this as another opportunity to study. I have not arrived. You have not arrived. But I want to strive to bear those fruits. And I know you can do it too. That's the Christian. I'm going to keep saying that every time I go to the in most cases. What is a Christian? Bear those fruits. How do you do it? Through the Holy Spirit. Study the word of God. Spending time in prayer. And that's where you will learn that. Humble yourself and be patient to others. All right. I hope you enjoyed uh, the party and I uh, look forward to you. We've got part <laughs> F and also part G. We've been there for a long time. And that's why I want to share it with you. Uh, and I hope you do enjoy it. And like I said, if you get a chance, join us. All right. All right. Well, I'll check you later. Enjoy part uh, E. Have a good day. Uh, Jim, I hear that the, the guy they're talking to, that's his name right there. Uh, Ella Kim, Kim, son of Hilkalah, and the king at that time was Hezekiah. And it said this guy is supposed to be, you know, it's interesting. I was looking at it, Jim, because I'm saying is, I guess he's a son, and he's taking over the position of a financial part of the kingdom. Uh, is based on that, but I can bring that up too. I thought I, I thought I had incorporated the whole scripture in there. One second. Uh, you said verse uh, 20? 20. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought I put, is it, I thought I had 20 in there, didn't I? Mm -hmm. no, okay, I didn't. here's 20. Go ahead, Elder, for that one.
Uh, is it up? Yeah. Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> no, I didn't see it. Oh, what's that? Better, you, you better pull out that jawbone, man. I, I, I left it in the car. <laughs> it's like you stopped by a cop. <laughs> it shoot me if I had to go through a lot. <laughs> I know that's right. Take my job on out and shoot this. Good in Kevlar. Welcome. Hallelujah. We, we, we just getting into the King Kid, baby. 20, okay. 20? Yeah. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will say unto my servant, Eliakim, the son of Hel Elkiah, Elkiah, and I will clothe him with that robe, with thy robe, and strengthen him with thy girdle, and I will commit thy government into his hand, uh -huh. and he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and to the house of Judah. Yeah, and, and the key of this. Okay, okay. Now, stop right there. Stop right there. <clears throat> now, now. Apparently, if you read this whole thing, yeah, I, I went back and kind of read the whole thing in context because I want to Yeah, I did read that too, yeah. Apparently, one guy is already in this place. Uh-huh. He's, he's already occupying this. This treasure, right? My man just got something like that, yeah. But, 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 well, but not just a slot. He's already exercising a certain kind of... Because my thing like, father. Yeah, I know. So he, he just talking about... When he when he said the word father, I'm like, wait a minute, I thought you were talking about just giving him. No, this thing has something far deeper. He said, look, I'm going to take what he's got. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to give it to you. Right. And he said, what I'm going to take is, I will take his clothes or his robe. I will clothe him uh -huh. with thy robe. Yeah. And strengthen him with thy girdle. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I will commit thy government unto his hand. Right. That's interesting, right? And he shall be a father. So all of these things that this that this book I had yeah. are going to be transferred to another person. Yeah. But it appears that the reason that they're being transferred <clears throat> is not just only for access and control. Right. It appears that it appears, listen up. I don't think that God would ever give anybody a fathering role if they don't have a heart of oneness with him. Yeah. And and right, I, I agree. And it seemed like it was a shape of, of touch out of Jesus, the way I was looking at it concerning this verse. When I, those who are just signing in, we're looking at Isaiah 22. We started verse uh, 20 all the way down to 25. You see, remind me of what he did with Saul. Yeah. When, when, when he sent Samuel to Saul, he tells Saul, look, you ain't obey what God told you to do. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And now God don't reject it, your boy. Yeah. And God, in, in chapter 13, the first Samuel says, and God himself has gone out and found him a man yeah. to be king of Israel. Right. And it looks like this same kind of thing is happening with this guy. And he said, the message to this guy is, look, God done found him a man that he gonna take your role, he gonna take your girl, he gonna take your government, he gonna take your position, he gonna take all that was entrusted to you, he gonna give it to this guy. Yeah, yeah. But but when God found David, he found David not because David had skills. Right, right. But because David had a right heart. Okay. You follow me? Yes, sir. So in, in all of these things, you are never going to be able to divorce that when you see God start selecting people, right. he told you, I don't look at the outward appearance. Uh-huh. You know whenever that I need a vessel, a servant, whenever I want to do something, I, the first place I look up is upon a man's heart. Yeah, okay. And okay. it is it's in that heart that it's going to qualify him. And well, that's my criteria for whether he could be useful in my fulfilling the eternal purpose. And I, I don't see that any different than what's happening right there in that in that text. There is something about this guy that, 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 that God has found in him that he chooses to snatch some stuff from one fellow right. and give it to another. But in the process of describing that, he talks about this, this uh does it say does it say uh 
father of government. What do you say? He said government. Uh, it's on the verse 21, and I will commit a government into his yeah. hands. Yeah. That was saying like a type of Jesus here. Uh, and his name is called God is Rising, a God of Rising. Now, earlier in Isaiah chapter 9, there is a the, the indirect related verse because that's the verse where he started talking about. Uh, let me make sure I got it right. Who well, was a child is born? Because that, that is that, isn't that Emmanuel? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Verse 6. <clears throat> Verse 6 says, For unto you, yeah. unto us a child is born, uh -huh. unto us a son is given. It's very interesting that you use the word. Yeah. Child yeah. and son. And son. Uh -huh. Now, a child can be born. Yeah. But a son has to be given. Oh, wow. Well, that's a whole different. That's a whole different story here. But, but that's, we're, we're, that's what we come back to. Yeah, that is different. Yeah. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Uh huh. So I thought it was interesting that he goes on to talk about all these things, and it, in the end it said, of the, <laughs> the said, "Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end." Right. And upon the throne of David. And upon his kingdom, <laughs> order it, and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forevermore, or even forever. So you start digging in these verses, and you'll find that what, what Jesus now Jesus uses these words. I went through Revelation and I looked at every description in those seven churches. There are seven descriptions that Jesus himself, I call him self-description. Right, right. What somebody said about Jesus. This is what Jesus said about himself. Yeah. yeah. He says, the one who is holy, the one who is true, the one who has the key of David. Uh-huh. So it's interesting that when he describes himself, he goes and chooses something that has already occurred. He's actually using the Old Testament scripture to describe himself. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Looking at it. You know, it was like, it, but it was interesting when I saw the difference of uh, this this young man, and he's talking about his son, right? But he's the king. That's not the king's son, right? That's this is this is the treasurer's son, correct? This is somebody, this is somebody who works in the treasury. They either work in the treasury or is over the treasury. Yeah, but, but but he's not he's not the son of the king, is it? No, he's not the son of the king. He's son of the treasurer. But and Jesus and Jesus ain't no ain't no Levite either. Right. <laughs> That's right. He should. Judah. He a priest. He a high priest. And he ain't anybody. <laughs> That's true. That's the lion true. of the tribe of Judah. But you know, but I guess what I'm saying is when I looked at nine, and like you said, even in verse uh, Isaiah twenty two twenty one, I will commit that government unto his hand. And then like you said, verse nine, it was talking about in the government will rest upon his shoulders. I was just, I was just kind of saying, okay, now this is not the king's son, this is the treasurer's son, but the the the, the government will rest on. Is that the same thing saying when they say commit to government? That's the same thing as government resting on his shoulders. Well, I think, I think, I think what we can get from this is, is that the implication. Of, is that in this shadow, this all this is is a shadow now. Oh, yeah. When Jesus, when Jesus draws from them, he is talking about his position spiritually. Okay, yeah, yeah. Now, th these guys are talking about something that is foreshadowing what who Jesus is and what he'll do. Right. And, and so even David himself, all that is said about David is a foreshadowing of Jesus. Of Jesus, yeah. His position as king, his his having a heart after God's own heart, all of that is really just things that are really putting the fullness of that reality is only realized in this son and this child that is born and this son that is given. <laughs> yeah, son is born. Child is born, son is given. Son is coming from the treasurer. Child, I'm just I'm trying, I'm trying to tell you. Okay. The child is born, that's humanity. But the song that is given is divinity. 
So you got a you got you got humanity and divinity merged into one. And that's why Jesus often continues <clears throat> that he's the son of man. Yeah. But he's also the son of God. Yes, sir. <laughs> so a, the, the son of God can be born. Woo! Woo! He's already been there from the foundation of the world. <laughs> he, he, he never found that before. He can't be born. <laughs> so he has to be given. <laughs> Mm. Woo! So look at this thing. when Jesus taught these things. Now we got to go back and say, okay, when Jesus uses these shadow things, yes, sir, describe himself. You cannot divorce that from those first two things he said about himself. He called himself first holy, uh huh, and then he called himself true, yeah, and then he said. And has the key of David. Of David, yeah. So now, it, does it does it is it is it necessary for us to understand these things together to get the fullness of what Jesus talked about? See, that's what happened in Scripture. No word is in Scripture that is just there to occupy space. Right, right. All of these things, I believe, are there to try to give you hints and pointers and 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 and, and references. So that when you really get at what God is talking about, you get that not by assumptions. Yes, sir. Or opinion. <clears throat> you get there by that which is written. Interesting. 